OK, we're going to look at Introduction to Integration. Now, Isaac Newton in the late 18th century made, amazing, uh, made an amazing breakthrough by bringing together two branches of mathematics, differentiation and integration. And he, made, he discovered that they are, were indeed actually the reverse function of each other. So that if, for example here, we have what we're going to call a differential equation. We have the gradient function. Um, he discovered that integration was actually the reverse of differentiation, so that if I integrated this function, I would get back to the original function um, by doing the reverse of what I first did. So let's think about what we first did. Um, so what, what did this function look like? before it was differentiated. Let's just take the term 4x. Now, when this, this currently has a power of 1. So previously, because when we differentiate, we take away a power, so previously that must have had a power of 2. Yep, still got that 4 there. And then when we differentiated, that power of 2 came down um, and was put in front of that 4. So to undo that 2, I need to divide by 2 here so that I can kind of cancel out any 2 that was put there. Um, and let's think about the, the term um, 1. Previously, I'll call it minus 1, previously that term must have been minus x. So I can say then that this original curve must have been y equals, and I can simplify here by dividing by 2. This original um, expression must have been y equals 2x squared minus x. Now, you can see, actually, over here, that many functions might get a gradient function of 4x minus 1, because this would differentiate to 4x minus 1, and so would this, because both their constant terms would disappear. So how do, how do I know what the constant term here was? So the kind of question you might get is something like this. Find the particular solution to a differential equation at a particular point. Right, our differential equation at the beginning was this. So we have to... To get back to the original curve, we're going to integrate it to give us the original curve. And up here we showed that um, 4x, to get back to the original function, that would have been 2x squared. Minus 1 would have been minus x. And then don't forget your plus c. Now, because we have been given a particular point, minus 1, 2, I'm just going to sub that in. So y is 2 and x is minus 1 squared minus, minus 1, right, the c is unknown. So I'm solving for c. So I've got 2 equals um, 2 plus 1 plus c. Therefore, c is 3 minus 2. c is minus 1. Now I've found my constant term. I can write down, I can fill this bit in, and I can say my equation of my curve is y equals 2x squared minus x minus 1. So go looking at this graph, these both had the same gradient function. So what, trying to de decide, decide which one is the correct curve, I needed a point. I was given my point, and therefore this one, this is the curve, right? Y equals 2x squared minus x minus 1 at this particular, because I've been given this particular point. So one use of integration is to get back to the original curve. Right. OK, let's now have a little look, um, because there is a symbol for integration, and it's like an elongated S, and that's this symbol here, right? And so if you've got a function and you're go about to integrate it, you need to write it out like this. The integral, this is the integral of your function, um, which might have a few terms in it, and this bit at the end, dx, which means with respect to x, in this case, or with respect to whatever 
letter it is that you're differentiating with respect to x. So in terms of our generalised results, remember previously we, ha we had this function, uh, 4x minus 1, and we saw that to get back to the original function, we had to take whatever power was here, we added 1. So in general, if this is x, you add 1 to the power that it's already got, and then you divide through by n plus 1. Because that's what we did over here. The current power was 1. We added 1 to give us 2. Then we divided through by n plus 1, which in this case was 2. Our 4 was still there and obviously simplified. And if you've got just a, um, a number on its own, then obviously previously that was a, an x term. The power of x was 1. So we'll just put minus x there. Um, so this is our formula for integrating any function. Um, so write that down in your pack. OK, let's look at integrating some functions. So here we go. We've got this example and this example. Um, the first rule is this. Always simplify before you integrate always, 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 and, and separate out, multiply out brackets, divide through indices so that you've got separate terms in, in x. So let's look at what we've got here. Okay, so this is 2x plus 3 in brackets is all multiplied by root x. Remember, root x is x to the power half. So I'm going to say that the integral I've got is 2x times x to the power of a half plus 3 times x to the power of a half, all with respect to x. Just tidying that up, the integral I've got is x to the power 1 is multiplied by x to the power half, so that's 2 times x to the power 3 over 2, because you add the powers, and then this one is already OK, so that's that. OK, so now I'm ready to integrate. I still haven't integrated. So when I integrate, the integral symbol goes. Right? I'm just going to write it out as a function. I'm just going to call this function f of x once I've integrated it. Um, so um, the power 3 over 2, I add 1 to that. So x to the power 3 over 2 adds 1, so it becomes to the power 5 over 2. Still got my 2 there. And then I divide that through by 5 over 2. Okay, and then the next term, plus, um, so I've got my 3 there, x to the power of a half, I add 1, it becomes the power 3 over 2, and then I divide by 3 over 2. Now, I want you to set it out like this for your first line, because in the exam, you will get a mark for this if you set that out quite clearly, even if you then make a mistake later, because the mistake is likely to be in the next line when we're getting rid of these, denom these fractional denominators. So our next line, um, let's see if I can just squeeze things up a little bit. Just move that up there a bit. OK. Right, our next line, get my pen back. Um, what I suggest we do for this next line is that the denominator we flip it over, right, because it's divided by 5 over 2, which is actually the same as multiplying by it flipped over. So I'm going to flip my 2 over 5 and put it on the top line. I've still got my 2. I think let's put it all in brackets. And then my x, remember, was to the power 5 over 2. Then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to flip my 3 over 2, because I'm now changing it to multiply, not divide. And then I've got 3x to the power 3 over 2. Right, now let's tidy it up. I've got 4 fifths x to the power 5 over 2. And then here the 3 and the 3 will cancel. So I've got 2x to the 3 over 2. Now, I know what you're all thinking. You're all thinking this. Don't you forget about me. Don't you forget about C. Yes, of course, don't forget about C. Put it in red, plus C, plus C. Really, really important. You don't have to write it in red, but you mustn't forget about it. Uh, let's bring that one back down here again. 
Okay, so that's the solution to that one. Okay, I think number two, I think we'll do on a different slide. So let's move over to another slide. Um, and let's kind of find our function. It's somewhere here, there it is. Add it in, there it is. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. So. Okay, now let's look at this function here. So remember, always simplify function before you integrate. So using the integral symbol, I'm going to write down that I have got x. Now, if we separate this out, we've got x over root x plus 2 over root x. And then, so I could, well, if I do it in stages like that, I've got this. Or integrated with respect to x. And then, simplify, I've got x to the power 1. Bring that root x, which is the power of minus a half, because it's on the bottom line. So that's minus a half plus 2 over x to the minus a half, all differentiated with respect to x. And then tidy that up. See, I still haven't even integrated yet. I'm just using my rules of indices. So the power 1 plus minus a half will be x to the power of a half. And then here I've got 2 to the x, 2 x to the power minus a half. Right, OK. Now I'm finally ready to integrate. So um, I'm going to, so that was just simplifying. Now, the actual function is x to the power of a half. I'm going to add 1 to that. So that'll be x to the power 3 over 2 and then divide by 3 over 2. Then over here, I've got x to the power minus a half. If I add 1 to that, it will be x to the half um, all over the x, uh, all divided by a half. And then what are you thinking? Yes, you are thinking that simple mind classic, don't you forget about me. Don't you forget about C. Yes, thank you for that little reminder. Okay plus c. Right, now let's tidy up. Remember, dividing by 3 over 2 is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So flip it over and bring it to the top. x to the power 3 over 2. And then flip it over, bring it to the top. I'm going to put brackets around these. Actually, I didn't need to put it around that one. But anyway, never mind. Plus c, f of x kind of run out of a bit of space here. So uh, what should I do? We'll just bring all of that up there. And then the final line, um, f of x equals 2 thirds x to the power 3 over 2 plus 2 times 2 is 4 x to the half plus c. Okay. That's the integral of that particular function. OK, so make sure you've got all of these examples written down in your work pack, ready to consolidate this in lessons.